Welcome to the webcast entitled Advanced Applications for HD PE Pipe with New PERT Material. We have just a few announcements before we begin. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. The slides will advance automatically throughout the presentation. You can submit a question at any time using the Q&A box located in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. At the bottom of your console, you'll find a help icon for technical assistance. If your screen freezes or the slides do not appear to advancing as they should, please try exiting and restarting the session as it may be an issue with your connectivity. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I will now turn the call over to Wes Long. Wes Long is the Technical Projects Director of Performance Pipe, a division of Chevron Phillips Chemical Company LP located in Plano, Texas. Wes has a BS in Mechanical Engineering from Florida State University. With over 27 years of experience in PE pipe sales, marketing, manufacturing, and technical support, Wes is an expert in applications for plastic piping systems and global resin supplies. He currently leads company efforts to specify and promote the latest PERT piping systems for high-temperature industrial, mining oil, and gas-gathering applications. Wes, you may begin. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Wes Long, and I also have with me uh, Heath Castile, our Senior Technical Services Engineer. Uh, today we're going to review advanced applications for HTPE pipe with new PERT materials. So for the next, uh, about, say, 45 minutes, I will provide a PE pipe overview and an introduction of our new Platinum Stripe 1800 Series PERT pipe and fittings, followed by a recent case study. Uh, throughout the presentation, you'll be able to ask questions by typing those in that Q&A box located in the lower right corner of your screen. And Heath will be helping me. He's going to review these. And at the end of the presentation, we will answer as many as time will allow. Uh, we'll allow uh, follow-up uh, and answer all the remaining questions uh, after the webinar. Also, the webinar is being recorded and will be placed on our website for future viewing for those that weren't able to attend today. So next third slide. Um, so what is polyethylene? Um, polyethylene is a plastic material. Uh, plastics are divided into two basic groups. We have thermoplastics and thermosets, both of which are used to produce plastic pipe. Thermoset materials, including polyethylene, which is able to be remelted upon the application of heat to make pipe and fittings while retaining all the physical properties of the original material. Whereas a thermoset plastic material, such as fiberglass reinforced plastic or FRP and cross-linked PEX PEX materials cannot be remelted following production once they have been shaped and cured. Polyethylene is a semi-crystalline material where we have both crystalline regions, as you can see in the top image, and non-crystalline or amorphous regions, as you can see in the bottom image. This makes up the molecular structure of the resin material. Um, because of their closer packing, uh, the crystalline regions at the top are denser than the amorphous regions. Therefore, polymer, polymer or resin density is higher with greater crystallinity. And HDPE resins typically have up to 90% crystalline regions with the physical, the polyethylene material's tensile strength and stiffness increasing with density. So, should be on the fourth slide. From cradle to pipe, this uh, shows the, uh, the, the, the journey that polyethylene takes to go from, uh, basically from the wellhead to the finished product for us, which is a pelletized material that ultimately is extruded into polyethylene pipe. So polyethylene resin is produced from natural gas, methane, which is C1H4, or oil. Typically in the United States, ethane, referred to as C2, which is the heavier liquid natural gas, is used to produce ethylene. Propane, C3, and butane, C4, can also be used to produce ethylene. Polymerization of ethylene is how polyethylene is produced, creating a chain of carbon-based molecular units of various lengths or molecular weights. The polyethylene is initially in a powder fluff form that is then pelletized for further processing into pipe and fittings. Next slide. 
for uh, conventional extrusion, the, the pellets are then extruded into pipe, and the heart of the process is this extruder. Very simply, the extruder is just a machine that contains a barrel with a screw inside and surrounding heater bands to melt and mix the pellets that are fed in from a hopper and then pumped by a screw that is driven by a motor and gearbox. These pellets are pumped into a pipe die that gives the pipe its shape and initial dimensions. Below is a picture of an extrusion line with the extruder located at the far left. The pipe progresses from the die to a series of vacuum and cooling tanks. The pipe is pulled along by a puller and then to the saw for cutting into 40 or 50 foot standard lengths or for sizes up to six inch, it can be coiled into rolls of longer lengths. Uh, PE 4710 resin. Polyethylene pipe materials in the U.S. have continued to advance over the years, and these materials are recognized in ASTM with a material designation code that quickly identifies the most significant engineering properties of a PE pipe material. The first code identifies the material with the letters PE for polyethylene materials. The first digit represents the density range of the base PE resin. This reflects the polymer's crystallinity, which in turn gives the material strength and stiffness as we discussed before. The second digit identifies slow crack growth resistance based on pent testing or Pennsylvania notch testing. And third, the last two digits provide the material's maximum recommended hydrostatic design stress for water at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The more advanced PE4710 materials with the higher hydrostatic design stress of 1,000 PSI now allow higher pressure ratings, and with the new PE4710 PERT material that was introduced in early 2016, pressure ratings are now expanded to temperatures of 180 degrees Fahrenheit, 82.2 degrees Celsius, with intermittent capability as high as 203 Fahrenheit for some applications. The resin evolution. This chart shows the history of advancement of PE resin materials that now allow the same size PE pipes to operate at higher pressure ratings. Note the same size, older PE 3408 DR11 materials had a maximum design pressure of 160 PSI, while the same size PE 4710 material has a maximum design pressure of 200 PSI. Whoops, what happened to our... Oh, sorry about that. I missed that. Uh, it didn't feed through. So... Oops, too fast. So why HDPE pipe? HDPE pipe provides the lowest life cycle cost of all piping solutions because of the following. Very low failure rates, joints that are leak-free when properly fused, Flexibility that allows the pipe to be field bent, reducing the need for fittings. The pipe is seismically qualified and excellent for use in shifting soils. The lack of corrosion and a non-stick inner surface that is smoother than FRP steel and concrete. And the pipe is produced in straight lengths or coils. It is lightweight with a density an eighth of steel. It is UV protected for outside storage and operation. And finally, PE pipe provides a long design life. Now we'll review pipe design with the new PERT resin. What is PERT? PERT, quite simply, is polyethylene of raised temperature resistance. In the U.S., this applies to PE materials that have an established HDB at 180 degrees in the Plastic Pipe Institute's TR4. TR4 provides an industry listing of the hydrostatic design basis and hydrostatic design stress for thermoplastic piping materials or pipe as required by ASTM standards. 
The PERT resin is the only PE resin listed above 60 C or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. PERT pipe, the bimodal benefit. So what makes the PERT material unique? The new PERT material contains a greater number of polyethylene molecules with high molecular weight chains, much more than standard PE4710 materials. Higher molecular weight determines the resin's durability. Long-term strength, toughness, ductility, and fatigue, and fatigue resistance all improve as molecular weight increases. All this sounds so great, so why wouldn't we want the highest molecular weight possible? We, we would. Unfortunately, the higher molecular weight makes resins much more difficult to process. The new PERT is designed with bimodal resin technology, giving us the ability to process this resin into pipe. By using additional co-monomer in this high molecular weight fraction, more tie chains are formed that make the resin tougher and temperature resistant. I liken this to an additional amount of stronger rebar in a concrete foundation. The resin material also contains a special additive technology that provides the greatest oxidative resistance required for these demanding applications. PERT history. PERT is not new. It was first introduced in 1981 the same product that was introduced in 1981 is still sold today for radiant heating applications. Although there are several suppliers of PERT resins around the world, they are predominantly medium-density polyethylene resins and do not meet the ASTM requirements in North America. PERT resins have only been used in limited industrial applications until now due to pipe size limitations. Most PERT resins cannot be used to produce pipe larger than 6 inches in diameter due to low melt strength. They have lower hydrostatic strength requiring thicker walls to achieve desired pressure ratings due to their lower density. Platinum Stripe 1800 Series PERT changes the game. It is the first material to meet the ASTM requirements in North America as a PE4710 material capable of being produced in large diameters for industrial and energy applications. Platinum Stripe 1800 Series PERT High Temperature PE Pipe and Fittings. Let's review the standards for this new product. Platinum Stripe 1800 Series PERT is a PE 4710 material with an established cell classification per ASTM D3350, and it is produced to meet ASTM F714, F2619, and API 15LE. The product can also be manufactured as needed to ASTM D2513 and D3035. Platinum Stripe 1800 Series PERT pipe and fittings help customers achieve differentiated performance in a range of demanding, high-temperature, industrial and energy applications, including mining, oil and gas gathering, produced water, pulp and paper, chemical processes, power plants, and district energy systems to produce steam, hot water, or chilled water from centralized plants. PERT performance attributes. The key performance attributes of the new PERT pipe are higher operating temperature compared to standard PE4710 products, allows continuous operating range from minus 49 Fahrenheit to 180 Fahrenheit with intermittent operating temperatures up to 203 Fahrenheit for some applications. Greater than 20 times the PE4710 requirements for stress crack resistance the use of native backfill or a sandless installation for shallow, non-traffic applications, a patented stabilizer system for high-temperature, oxidative environments with a D3350 CC3 rating. 
the same fusion parameters as standard PE4710 pipes, and a full range of pipe sizes, pressure capabilities, molded and fabricated fittings. Resistance to slow crack growth. For resistance to slow crack growth, a PE4710 material requires greater than 500 hours of pent testing compared to the previous PE3608 materials requiring only 100 hours of pent testing, while the new PERT material achieves greater than 10,000 hours of pent testing. This virtually eliminates slow crack growth as a failure mode and reduces the need for special bedding and embedment. Dimension ratio, or DR. In addition to the pipe's hydrostatic design stress, HDS, the pipe's specified dimension ratio, or DR, is used to determine the pipe's pressure rating or design pressure. Very simply, this is the outside diameter, the OD, divided by the pipe's minimum wall thickness, T. The common standard dimension ratio for most PERT pipe sizes is SDR11, which has a 200 PSI pressure rating in water at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Working pressure rating. The pressure rating or design pressure is defined by the equation two times the hydrostatic design stress divided by the DR minus one. This is then multiplied by the service temperature design factor, F sub T, and the environmental application factor, A sub F. The hydrostatic design stress for PE4710 materials at 73 degrees Fahrenheit is 1,000 PSI. PERT pipe sizes and pressure ratings. Like standard PE4710 materials, the PERT is a solid wall pipe produced by conventional extrusion as shown on those previous slides. The process is OD and wall thickness controlled to produce sizes from half inch to 54 inch outside diameter with standard dimension ratios ranging from DR7 to DR32.5. PERT pipe and fittings are pressure rated up to 180F with the most common SDR11 having a pressure rating of 200 PSI at 73 and 100 PSI at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This chart shows the pressure ratings of Platinum Stripe 1800 series PERT pipe. This chart is very useful because it provides the pressure ratings for all of the standard dimension ratios for our Platinum Stripe 1800 PERT for every 10 degree increment from 50 degrees to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This chart, along with our other PERT literature, can be found in our industrial and oil and gas gathering submittal tabs. On our website, sorry. Slide 21 is PERT spec sheets. These are also uh, found in the same section on our website under either the industrial or the oil and gas gathering submittal tabs. You'll find our spec sheet as well as our model specification. Uh, the PERT model specification uh, found on our website provides also a lot of valuable information, including information on joining as well as installation. This is a photo of a 12-inch DR11 Platinum Stripe 1800 series PERT pipe. Um, the next few slides will show uh, other photos of recently produced PERT pipe, the first one here being 12-inch DR11. You will note that the PERT material is readily identifiable by four platinum color stripes. 
The next photo shows 24-inch DR11PERT pipe. And when we first began producing the PERT material, we produced solid black PERT, and we quickly realized that our customers, as well as our plants, needed an easy way to distinguish this pipe, which is why we added the four unique colored stripes. Thirty-inch DR21 PERT. This was for a thirty-inch 30 project that we will highlight in our case study here in a few minutes. Quick burst testing. This is eight-inch DR11. Uh, this is a standard QA test for short-term pressurization to rupture, known as the quick burst test. This test is conducted following production startup in each of our plants for sizes 12 inch and smaller. Note that the PERT pipe swells and bursts in a very ductile manner at approximately 750 PSI. Heat fusion joining options. The same heat fusion joining options available for standard PE4710 materials are available for PERT. Butt fusion, saddle fusion, and electrofusion can all be performed using the same fusion parameters as standard PE4710 pipes. Heat fusion welding. This slide shows the standard fusion parameters for PE4710 materials which require fusion equipment to perform the standard procedure to secure the pipe, face the pipe, align the pipe ends, melt the pipe ends, and then join the pipe and hold until the joint is cool. Fitting options. A full, line, a full line of molded and fabricated, fully pressurated PERT fittings are currently available. Electrofusion fittings produced from the same PERT resin material will also soon be available. Flange connections. The same flange adapter adapters available for joining PE4710 pipe are also available for PERT pipe. Now we'll review a case study uh, for our new PERT pipe and fittings. Uh, this is a pulp, or, pulp and paper mill case study for Can 4's Prince George, British Columbia pulp and paper mill. We recently completed a project in British Columbia, Canada to replace 3,200 feet of 30-inch FRP piping with our new PERT piping. Can 4 Pulp is one of the largest pulp and paper companies in the world with a large mill located in Prince George, British Columbia. The existing FRP was being used to convey bleach affluent from the plant to a series of settling ponds with temperatures as high as 175 degrees Fahrenheit. In the last five years, there had been 10 major failures in the FRP piping that presented significant environmental issues as well as production shutdowns to the mill. The failures were primarily attributed to improper pipe bedding and improper joint assemblies with the FRP. Because temperatures of the line reached as high as 175 degrees Fahrenheit, traditional PE4710 material was not a good option. Canfor chose to replace the FRP with the new PERT piping system because of significant cost savings. A PERT liner option was also considered, but too many bins made this less practicable. 
So they decided to bury the new PERT piping adjacent to the existing FRP piping, which would also allow the installation to occur without affecting mill operation. Replacing the aging FRP with new PERT piping, these next few slides will show some of the photos from the installation, with the first showing the new PERT piping as it arrived at the job site to re replace the FRP piping shown on the left. Uh, this slide shows a project plot plan for the 30-inch pipe installation uh, that was an underground installation leading from the plant to the series of settling uh, ponds at the far right of the red line. These are some additional photos uh, from the job site where you can see where the pipe was uh, the 30-inch DR21 pipe was heat-fused, butt-fused together uh, very rapidly and was able to be installed very easily. Uh, and even um, one of the things that the owner uh, found when the project was underway was a lot of the uh, underground obstacles uh, that appeared when they began excavating were not on the original drawings. So they found places where they were going to have to change their route. And one of the great things about the polyethylene pipe was the ability to be able to field bend the pipe around these obstacles. So they were able to, in many cases, uh, bend the pipe and avoid having to put in fittings that other materials would have required. This is a cost comparison. Um, the Prince George Mill used a company all North Engineering, located in Prince George, British Columbia, for their design and installation oversight and inspections. All North Engineering and Canfor reported that the material supply and field installation of PERT piping reduced the total project cost by one-third based on the following. The PERT material costs were less than equivalent FRP material cost, and the PERT installation was able to be performed over 11 times faster than FRP uh, because of the heat fusion process. With at least eight 50-foot pipe length PERT fusions completed per day compared to one joint where two 20-foot pipe lengths of FRP could be button-wrapped, joined, and cured in one day. The FRP was also considered to be very fragile during handling with a much more difficult and longer joining process. The below table shows a comparison of FRP versus PERT estimated joining times by size. Uh, conclusions. For the case study, a cost savings of, for the project of 33% was achieved by replacing FRP with the new PE4710 PERT piping. The PERT piping was able to be quickly joined by heat fusion, creating a leak-free, continuous monolithic pipe that could be field-bent, eliminating joints and minimizing flanged connections. The PERT piping was also able to be joined by the same fusion procedures used for standard PE4710 pipe, requiring no additional training. Fusion joint verification and documentation by using a data logger eliminated the need for most hydrostatic testing. This was very valuable uh, because the the length of the runs to be able to fill these lines with water uh, takes a very long time. And because they felt so confident in their fusion, because they had data logger 
uh, verification uh, and documentation to support that their fusions were made properly with the proper fusion procedures, they felt so confident that they did not have to do nearly as much hydrostatic testing. They felt that the joints uh, wouldn't be tested at the hydrostatic pressures anyway, based on uh, past experience and recommendations by the manufacturer. And then uh, they only needed to do the hydrostatic testing where they had flanged connections or transitions to the FRP. The engineering contractor was also on site during construction, which enabled better communication with construction and minimized change orders. This slide here just basically summarizes the Platinum Stripe 1800 series PERT pipe uh, attributes. Uh, we hope you will consider Platinum Stripe 1800 series PERT pipe and fittings for extreme conditions. The pipe, uh, again, offers higher operating temperature compared to standard PE4710 products, greater than 20 times the PE4710 requirements for stress crack resistance. The patented stabilizer system for high temperature oxidative environments with the uh, CC3 rating and the use of native backfill or sandless installation for shallow non-traffic applications, the same fusion parameters as standard PE4710 pipes, and a full range of pipe sizes, pressure capabilities, molded and fabricated fittings. Uh, the new pipe material is perfect for industries with extreme conditions needing large diameter, high temperature, corrosion resistant pipelines. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. We will now spend a few minutes reviewing and answering questions that have been submitted. And uh, we we're committed to answering all questions, even if we do not uh, get to every one of them today. So Heath, uh, have you had a chance to review some of the questions? Yeah, we've got some good questions here. I guess the first one uh, was, is wanting to know, are there current applications that require the new PERT materials rather than the standard uh, polyethylene materials? I guess the, the answer to that one is essentially the standard PE4710, the recommendations that the hottest temperature standard 4710 can withstand continuously is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So any applications that are uh, above 140 is where, really where the uh, platinum stripe would come into play up to roughly 180 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And another question is, what is the largest diameter of the 1800 series available? Um, as the, the project that Wes touched on, that was a 30-inch diameter pipe that we've made, 30-inch DR21. I believe that we promote that we can produce up to a, a 42-inch uh, diameter PERT. It's going to be limited somewhat on the DR because the wall thickness generally is going to be limited to maybe just a, a little bit over uh, two inch in wall thickness um, would be the thickest that we can make. Um, let's see, can PERT materials be joined with standard HDPE pipe? That's a, that's a great question and the answer is yes. Uh, the same fusion parameters that are used to fuse uh, current PE4710 materials uh, would be used to fuse the PERT material and you wouldn't have to, to alter uh, the fusion process when you're fusing, mi mixing and matching uh, current 4710s with the uh, PERT materials. Uh, this is more of a question. I'll let Wes uh, take this one. It's what is the minimum order quantity for ordering? Uh, well, that would vary based on the size and the DR. Uh, we are stocking uh, 3 through 12 inch DR11 in stock, um, but depending on the quantity and the size, uh, the size of the pipe would matter because of the, uh, you know, 2 through 12 would be considered a standard inventory and larger sizes would mostly be run to order, um, you know, unless we had a similar size production run. But uh, it would just really depend on the size of the pipe. And sort of related to that is a question on how long it would take to get a quote 
for us to supply PERT? We should be able to turn around a quote. Uh, we have a process for that um, that requires a registration on our website, but we should be able to turn around quotes within a reasonable 24-hour period. Uh, we just have to review the application and the um, verify the um, information required for the pro project registration. And here's a, a common question I get on the 1800 series PERT is dealing with the uh, thermal expansion and contraction of, of PERT materials for elevated temperatures. And it's wanting to know if the same uh, rule of thumb of one inch per 10 degree Fahrenheit per 100 feet of pipe rule of thumb applies. And the answer is yes. Uh, the, the coefficient of thermal expansion for the PERT materials is very similar to the the standard PE 4710 materials. So this really the same rules and uh, guidelines apply when dealing with thermal expansion of PERT as, as traditional PE 4710. The, uh, it has a high coefficient of expansion, but due to the fact that the modulus is low and actually gets even lower as the temperature gets warmer, uh, it's very easy just to restrain that movement. And commonly for buried applications, the um, for, for um, a modest uh, temperature change, the, the soil restraint between the pipe and the soil is enough to, to anchor the pipe in a buried application. We have a question here on what are the differences or applications between 1800 series and 6300 series. Uh, initially, we did have a 6300 series PERT product. Uh, however, we have combined those into one 1800 series where the 1800 now also meets the API 15LE and F20 619 line pipe standard. So we now have uh, one product that meets both industrial and energy uh, specifications. We have another question here. Can it be used in NSF 61 applications? And the answer is yes. For potable water, it's fully uh, tested and listed for NSF 61 potable water applications. Here's another question for Wes, really. Is it, do we make the PERT materials at all of our plants, or just some? Uh, currently, we've uh, started the production at Brownwood, and uh, we have the capability to run PERT at any of our plants uh, as demand increases. I see a product a question here. It seems this product would be very good for gas distribution near steam lines due to the higher temperature. Have you qualified this product to D2513? Uh, we can produce this product to D2513. Our standard product is, uh, is using the F2619 line pipe standard. However, we can produce to D2513 uh, with a special part number we can establish uh, to meet that standard. Uh, what we need to do, though, to sell into gas distribution, we do need to do the 49 CFR Part 192 fusion qualification testing, which we had planned to do in the first quarter of next year. What's what about the uh, specific markets that you see this pipe going into immediately? Well, where we've sold so far is uh, produced water. Uh, many energy applications have produced water that runs at temperatures uh, in, in uh, higher than 140 degrees. So we've sold a couple of projects for those that market. Uh, we've also sold, again, the pulp and paper, where you've got some very uh, corrosive uh, affluent materials and chlorine dioxide applications. Uh, we have sold uh, product in other uh, refinery applications for um, um, sugar cane refinery applications, uh, mining applications where mining uh, chemical processing plants are using some very corrosive high temperature uh, fluid streams uh, from uh, phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, um, very corrosive uh, uh, fluid streams uh, that, uh, that PERT would be well suited for because of the elevated temperature. And one regarding the striping, 
that's why you you know we come and put the platinum color stripes on the pipe, but they're wanting to know if we can put different colors for mining applications to identify the DR if needed. It, yeah, that would be possible. We have not uh, done that yet or looked at that yet, but that's certainly something we could investigate. Another common question on a PERT that we get is, is how it performs or does it perform better in regards uh, to corrosion and permeation resistance. Uh, but since it's still polyethylene, so it's going to perform the same from a, from a you know, polyethylene plastic so it doesn't corrode. But as far as uh, permeation, it's going to be, um, it's going to perform just like the, the standard 4710s in regards to permeation and the same uh, rough rule of thumb of the pressure D rate for, for uh, higher concentrations of liquid hydrocarbons applies for, for the PERT materials as well. Um, I see a question on this, what's the size range on molded fittings. Uh, right now we have molded fittings up through 8 inch and then fabricated fittings uh, beyond that. Uh, we have a question here, where to find the project form on the website. Uh, that would be located in either the industrial or oil and gas gathering tab under submittals. Under submittals, you would find a project registration form that you could complete to receive a quotation. So for any pricing related questions, you'd need to complete that form and get with your territory sales manager. Uh, someone asked what materials we're competing with with this product. I would say uh, stainless steel, uh, FRP, rubber line. A common question we get with PERT is in regards to the uh, temperatures above 180 degrees Fahrenheit when we're talking about uh, intermittent uh, temperatures up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, cer certainly the, the pressure rating is established at 180 degrees, uh, and that, that would be the maximum temperature that it could operate at continuously. So the 203 degree uh, limit would be more for intermittent or non-continuous uh, operation. So it's really going to kind of vary from a, a project to project uh, basis that we'd have to look at as far as the, the frequency and the, and the duration uh, that the pipe would be um, exposed to temperature spikes above 180 degrees um, because I guess the more frequent and the longer duration those temperature spikes, the, the more impact it could have on service life. So we'd probably take those on a, on a project by project uh, basis to provide more specific guidance. Have we missed any? Someone asked, is it better than standard PE4710 in corrosion and permeation resistance? It's going to be similar to PE4710 in corrosion and permeation resistance. I had a question on whether it can be used in lining uh, applications, and certainly the answer to, to that is, is yes. Uh, it would be uh, good for, I mean, just like standard polyethylene, uh, it can be used in slip lining, uh, swage lining, as, as well as some other uh, tight fit liner uh, applications. And, and really where it would come into play is where you're needing uh, better performance characteristics than standard 4710. As, as Wes alluded to, uh, this material is very well uh, stabilized, so it has the highest uh, chlorine uh, category listing with CC3, so it's very resistant to, to higher uh, oxidative type conditions if those were in the, in the flow stream, and this would certainly be a candidate uh, for that, where you've got an aggressive fluid that, that a pipeline that needs to be lined. 
We had another question on does the PERT melt slower than PE4710, and, and the answer to that is that it's going to be very similar to the other bimodal PE4710s. The fusion bead looks very similar and of similar size. Similar size. Someone just sent in about the, what is the chlorine rating of this pipe. Uh, it's a CC3, which is the uh, highest category currently in ASTM D3350 for, for polyethylene. Model spe uh, we had a question about the model specification. PP534 is still current. We're, we're in undergoing a, an update to that. Uh, right now, but uh, it's current as of right now. The, um, someone asked about the PowerPoint presentation and when it would be available. Uh, next week we should have it loaded on the website with the recorded presentation. So anyone uh, within any of your companies or any of your affiliates or coworkers that were unable to join will be able to go back and uh, review and re-listen re to the uh, presentation. getting a few questions on the quotation, I guess, procedure on the project form. Yeah, that, and the form is uh, located, again, on the website, and it outlines very clearly the terms and conditions for quoting. So I would recommend just go to performancepipe.com and go to the industrial or the oil and gas gathering tab and hit submittals, and you will see the PERT project registration form, and it will give you the guidelines for uh, being able to receive a quote as quickly as possible. But and you have to fill that form out for every for each quote each yet yeah, for each project. So uh, you uh, need to fill in every blank. If even if you don't have an answer for some of the blanks, at least put in a and then hit submit so that our that will immediately go to the territory sales manager or the sales manager. Uh, for both the industrial and the oil and gas gathering markets to review, and then they will get back to you. But again, I would encourage any, any project opportunities you have, uh, the best thing is to have good communication with your territory sales manager. So I would strongly encourage you to reach out to uh, either Mark Castle. Uh, he covers our western U.S. and is our sales manager for M&I. Uh, Mike Mohar in the central U.S. on M&I, or Casey Cords for the eastern and northern U.S. for M&I, and Tim Dyer for our energy market. And, of course, feel free to contact uh, Heath Castile or myself for any other questions you may have, and we'll be glad to help you any way we can. Have all the questions, Heath? I think well, probably this, this couple. other one here is another frequent question we get because it's kind of a concept that's a little bit new to, to North American markets, and it's re in regards to a sandless backfill uh, with the product. Um, so, I mean, essentially, the material has a very, very high resistance to stress cracking. Uh, like in Europe, they, they, there's a classification of resins called PE100RC, for resistance to cracking, and those are promoted for uh, sandless installations because they have very, very high stress crack resistance, so they're not really subject to um, or less prone to rock impingement uh, type stress cracks. So the same with, with this material, it's very it has a very high resistance to stress cracking. So in some applications where where you're not going to have to re rely on the embedment material to provide the strength. Um, 
so something that's fa fairly shallow and is not under uh, subject to traffic loading, then the native backfill uh, could be used for, for the embedment rather than uh, importing a, a sand. So that would be a, a good cost savings there. Oh, uh, Rick Elliott is our international sales manager and would be the person to contact for any international opportunities, uh, Rick uh, or Chase. Both of them are our international uh, sales team. where the fabric need to be made from uh, We had a question on fabricated fittings, Heath, and I believe the fabricated, uh, also Kurt Schill is our uh, fittings manager and is overseeing the, uh, the fittings uh, quoting process that goes back through the uh, quote process. And uh, we would be supplying all of the molded as well as the fabricated fittings. So you uh, have a one-stop shop for all of your fittings needs uh, when you request a quote. I think we have most of the questions covered, right? Well, so I'm going through some of the earlier ones because we, they were being rapid fire there. So rapid fire, yeah. I think we caught all the earlier ones. I'll double check. Some pricing questions. I'll defer to our territory sales managers and our pricing coordinators on pricing questions, which you need to go through the quote process on the um, on the uh, project registration form. I think we captured all of them, right? Well, I want to... Yeah, there's a few we'll, we'll circle back on. Okay. Well, I'd like to say thank you uh, very much for everyone that uh, took the time to join us today, and we greatly appreciate your business and your interest in our new product and uh, look forward to helping you specify the product. Uh, it's a great, great product and will help, uh, help you be able to show your customers value and savings and... Um, we're extremely excited about it and look forward to helping meet your needs and requirements for the future. Anything else, Heath? Not at this time, no. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, John. I think we've completed the, uh, the webinar. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This webcast is now concluded.